Because I couldn't remember all the words. <laughs> Ow. We interrupt this program to bring you... All right, everybody. My name is Kevin. And I'm Julie. And I'm Adam. And I'm John. And we are The Real Movie Guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Real Review, the series where we review and discuss all your favorite movies. Ladies and gentlemen, it's May, so you know what that means. Real anime. Real anime is a special event where we review all your favorite anime films, and on this episode, we're taking a look at another movie from the legendary studio, Studio Ghibli. We're going to be taking a look at uh, Earwig and the Witch. An orphan girl, Earwig, is adopted by a witch and comes to a spooky house filled with a mystery and magic. Okay, guys. So, this was just a matter of time, I think. It really was. Uh, you kind of can see the writing on the wall. Animation is going to CGI. And why not? Why not Studio Ghibli go ahead and invest everything they have into this new art style that they've never done before and give us a, a, a spectacular... Mo- oh. Wait, Earwig's Earwig's terrible? Oh yeah, that's right. Earwig is a friggin' terrible movie. Uh, I remember when this first came out, the buzz that was around how bad this movie was. And usually I'm one of those where I'll sit down and I'll go, well, it can't be that bad. You know, there's got to be something to it that's... No. Guys, I had a terrible time with this movie. It was insufferable. I could barely get through it. Uh, This is clearly the worst thing I think I've seen in... Not just Studio Ghibli's catalog, but even probably within many of the more popular animated studios catalog, I I had zero interest in this movie, and there's barely anything that I think that can save it. Uh, Adam, I want to start with you. What did you think? I think this wasn't a very good movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I have a lot to say about it. But I do want to say, to be fair, yeah. Uh, what was his name? Uh, his son Goro, right? Oh boy, Goro's yes. back. <laughs> Goro Miyazaki. It, it it feels like there was a lot stacked against him or working against him for this movie, mm-hmm. um, which I, I'm sure we'll get into. But uh, it was it was not very good. <laughs> All right, Adam. Well, I'm gonna let you elaborate when we get to that. So uh, I hope you're ready to uh, talk about a little bit of what Goro is working with here, because I'm I'm curious to see. Because okay. Goro's defense team. Yes, I know a little bit of what was going on, but uh, I don't know, yeah. man. You got to have some pretty good excuses with what you turned out here. But uh, all right, John. I can only imagine what you're gonna say. So why don't you talk? Start talking to me. <laughs> now let me talk about this piece of shit, garbage fire of a movie. <laughs> Stupid ass name, another damn witch character, another talking ass cat. Done with this crap. Yeah, it's a great one to hang it up on. Yeah, it's it's just uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's funny because this is from the writer of uh, *How's Moving Castle*. So when I did find that out, uh, and I'm sure Adam will elaborate a little bit on that too. Uh, there was there was some stuff I was expecting from this movie, and it feels like they kind of went back to the well and tried to do what they kind of did with Kiki's and some of those movies, try to bring some of that magic into the 3d realm. And it it just doesn't work whatsoever. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of issues which we're going to talk about, but Julie, before we start diving into it, what did you think of this one? I don't know what you guys are talking about. I loved this movie. Yeah. I thought it was great. All right. Julie's fired. No, it sucks. It sucks. Um, and it, it's frustrating. I love anything with witchy vibes. That's like my thing. This movie has potential, but the animation and the, the at, in the at the end of the day, the story just sucks. This looks like that um, crappy Pinocchio movie that went viral with Pauly Shore. It looks like it came from the same studio as that. It was that bad. 
Right. Yeah. Let's let's start with the animation, and then we'll talk about some of the other things that were going on with this movie. So as soon as this movie starts, it's absolutely terrible with the animation. Uh, you can tell, you know, Studio Ghibli has no idea what they're doing with CGI animation. And you know what? It might not necessarily be their fault to 100%. This is their first attempt, right? And then even in Japan, it's not a huge foray where they kind of jump into this style of animation. Uh, we're even seeing like growing pains in anime. I know, Adam, you can speak from some of the anime that's come out more recently. Uh, we've seen good uses of this style and we've seen some pretty terrible uses of, you know, just the CGI style in general. So Japan's still adapting, but... To do a full feature length movie with this style and give us this kind of product where there's like no texture work on any of the characters or the, the settings and characters are stilted and don't move correctly. Uh, I think the biggest issue I even had with it is that Studio Ghibli is known for their charm in their characters through facial expressions, through movements. Uh, even Arietti, which I wasn't the biggest fan of, still captured some of those essential Studio Ghibli emotions and feelings through facial work and whenever earwig made a facial expression in this movie it was horrifying i'm sorry she was a terrifying looking character like it's just her character model was not suited to be in a 3d realm world and it's it's so off-putting uh adam i know you brought up this but um what were some of the issues that Goro was facing? Because now this is his third foray into film. Uh, he did Tale of Earthsea and then from on, Up on Poppy Hill, which I know those two were met with lukewarm reception. So th this was just like icing on the cake for his career right here. Yeah, so what I saw was that um, the animators of this film, they actually were like all new animators in general, they weren't actually part of Studio Ghibli, okay, or at least not at that time, and they were all new to uh, the CG, right? So that's kind of why we got the output that we got. Um, and on top of that, uh, his father uh, decided to, I guess, not help him at all. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> he's like, "Here you go." He's just... He had a weird credit. Uh, it was like planner or planning, and then you see how Miyazaki. Yeah. From I don't what know. I what read there was, there details was like, that did not help him at all. I <laughs> it was mean, all hands off. It's obvious, right? I, th I think we can all see that through the product that we were given. It's just that there, there's no Miyazaki charm, which it, it doesn't necessarily have to. But I think the Miyazaki charm has become unanimous, synonymous with Studio Ghibli. So that's kind of what I expect from their output. And we just don't get that here whatsoever in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Julie, I know you were talking about, too, when you I asked you, because this was based on a, a book, a novel, from the writer of Howl's Moving Castle. And when I asked you to look up the book, uh, what did you find out about the book, which I thought was incredibly interesting? Yeah, so I was adamant that I'm like, there has to be a good story here because there's so many like little nuggets where I'm like, this is really cool. Like the, it, the book has to be better. So the book was by Diana Wynne Jones. Um, however, I, and again, I was trying to find like a plot synopsis of the novel and I'm having a hard time. And then I went on Goodreads and someone wrote a review and mostly giving praise, but then they said, you know, a really abrupt ending. Um, and apparently Diana Wynne Jones was ill at the time of writing the novel. Um, and then it was published after her death. So maybe she didn't get to finish it or, you know, couldn't put her full. So I think it's actually a faithful adaptation is my guess. Um, another thing I saw online, which was an interesting, I guess, a movie edition was that they hinted that um, the Mandrake, Mandrake was Earwig's father. And I don't think that was in the book, but I thought that was actually an interesting change, but so I think this, like Adam said, this movie had a lot working against it. So maybe just don't completely go off the adaptation and like try and make a better story with an actual resolution, um, you know, and good animation. But right. know, that's and, just me. And I think we can all say that Hal Miyazaki has done that in the past. Uh, Howl's Moving Castle is the perfect example. I haven't read Howl's Moving Castle, but 
it's he took characters from that and turned it into his own story and made something unique and special that stands on its own two feet. And why that couldn't be done here is I, I have no idea. I guess Goro's not that imaginative, maybe, to make such a thing. Uh, if, he, if he was looking for his father to come help him, like Adam said, throughout the project and he had no guidance, uh, that kind of would speak to why maybe the movie is the way it is. He's like, well, I have a book. You know, I don't need anyone to help guide me or try to change the story. He just went by what he had. And if that's the case, then that's a shame because I told Julia when we were watching this movie, I'm like, all right. This animation is terrible. It's not going to get better. I have to get over it, right? I, I have to try and watch the movie for what it is. Because you get to a point where your brain is so rotted, your eyes are hurting from what you're watching, so your ears have to start listening to the actual story and try to look look beyond the garbage that's being put on the screen. And so I started to do that. And like Julia said, I think there are a few nuggets of good ideas in this movie. Uh, it, it had potential, which I think maybe makes it even worse that it is so bad. Uh, I do kind of like the idea of like Earwig is an orphan. She's kind of cast aside and then she's adopted by this family. Uh, and then it's just kind of weird, this movie, right? It turns into, like, it finds out that these witches were part of a band, which seems has, has really no connection to anything until, like, the latter end of the movie. Uh, you would think music would have been more important. It's a lot of bits and pieces of, like, interesting ideas that just never actually work together or meet. And by the time there's an inclining of something to happen when you get towards the climax and finale of this movie, it ends. It literally just ends on a fade-out, and it's like, oh... This, this movie's over, and well, thank God, I guess. Thank God, and I was kind of sad because I was kind of interested to see what would happen next. John, what do you think of that? Do you think if the story was better, you could have looked past the animation? Because I think I might have been able to forgive it if I had something more of a story. I mean, maybe, but my eyes hurt, my ears hurt after watching this movie. They killed everything. This is the movie you wish you were belonged in, Def. I have to do, deal with this movie. <laughs> Terrible. And Miyazaki, he's probably so ashamed of this movie that he didn't even want to put his last name on it. He probably would have just put Gordo on there. Look like, here. This is all your crap. Yeah, no, I... Disappointed in you, son. No, I think, you know, I think I could see him being disappointed. I mean, he came out of retirement right after this movie. So, um, you know, you have to think that there's some idea of that had a little bit of play to it. Uh, what do yeah. you think... Go ahead, John. He had to re- He had to fix his name. Yeah, he had After to fix it. Crap. He, he had to like, save. You know what? My last my last name has been screwed through, thrown through the dirt. After this crap. Yeah, I, th- I think it's pretty bad. Uh, Adam, what do you think? Do you think maybe there could have been? Do you? I think some of it's interesting, right? Like, am I not the only one that thinks that? <laughs> no, I do. I I think there there is definitely interesting bits, and I mean, like you said, it right at the end there it seems like there's something and then it just stops right and it kind of makes me wonder why did we do a movie about an unfinished book and then not finish it like maybe if the movie was a little bit longer you know give give me something for a little bit more because this is this movie is only like what an hour or something yeah it's short an hour, hour and 20 20 minutes yeah, yeah. Which is probably good considering it, it, what we got, but it's crazy how short it was. Yeah, and an interesting. Yeah, thing, and yes, you're you're right, but like it feels like it could have added a couple more scenes to it. Right, and I think the biggest thing is like this feels like a, and I think this was made for TV. From what I could gather, this was actually supposed to be a TV movie. It wasn't actually a theatrical release, so maybe there is something to be said for that. Uh, it feels like it's an introduction to it, like a pilot almost, right? To a TV show. Because I feel like a show or something could have come out after this and it just would have been, you know, a regular kid show that people would have watched. And if you told me that, I would have believed you. But to find out that there's even nothing after this movie is astounding that they were brave enough to do something like this. Because this isn't even like a nice, like experimental CGI. Oh, here's what our studio can do with CGI. We can blow your minds and do this new animation. There's just nothing here. It's just a very soulless movie. And it's a shame because I think like characters like the Mandrake, I think is really cool. I think he's a really interesting character. (laughs) And Earwig herself, I think she could have been even an interesting character. Like there were some interesting ideas with her story where she's a strong, independent girl who wants to kind of like take over everybody because she's hiding like all the hurt that she has in her heart. So she has to take control of the situation and, there's there's there is something there you know there definitely is but it just comes across so soulless and even the messaging i have to tell you for 
a kid's movie and who this is appealing to. So they're literally telling you if you're a slave, what you have to do is by overcoming slavery is to become the boss and become the new slave owner. That That's pretty much the, the theme of this movie. And I think that kind of blew me away that they were just like, they made Earwig completely unlikable at that point. Like there was no redeeming her character whatsoever. Like you're just a bitch. I don't know what to say. I hate to say that, but she's just a bitch. <laughs> Master manipulator. Yeah. And it's not fun. It's not like, ha ha. That was funny. It's just like, that's, that's terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, you just manipulated this. People. Even the Mandrake who kind of like liked you and was trying to show and you sympathy. Like you just totally like yeah. manipulated him. And it's weird because then they try to portray them as like a family unit, which I guess they are, but like she's still like she's control she's, you know, pulling all the reins, you know. Um, so is it just like a family of convenience? Like do they even remotely care about each other? I don't know. Or do I care too much about a crappy movie? I don't know. It's like they threw out all these narrative threads and just kind of hoped that something stuck or was interesting. But fortunately, none of them do because none of them have any form of completion or satisfying conclusion. Uh, who you know, even the, the music was like maybe one of the more interesting aspects, because on all the promotional work, which we've seen for this movie, it's always earwig singing on a microphone or playing a guitar. She doesn't do that at all in this movie not even remotely close uh music it seems like it was going to be this big thing about the band and her mom leaving her even that subplot is not even addressed at all it's just it's it's again it's just really if i didn't see it i wouldn't have believed it i think that's what this, this is the kind of movie that they would really just throw this this studio of this prestige would throw something out there like this i think that this is a hundred percent okay uh, i just I, I really don't understand uh one thing i will say though uh if, if you're looking at Studio Ghibli's history, it does kind of match to some degree. And I know this might be a slant against Studio Ghibli. Um, you know, this, maybe Goro got this from his dad where he likes to kind of continue the movie after the credits because he, he did that here. And unfortunately, uh, the stills at the end of this movie were far more interesting than the movie as a whole. Uh, Adam, I see you nodding your head. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Because I thought that animation style and those stills was better than everything I saw in that the entire movie. I agree. That was it was wild to see like I want to see that. Right. What happened with that? Like it was it was like they were continuing the story that I wanted to see animated in the film. Right. And they captured her facial reactions correctly. Like she like when she was like angry like they would take her nose away. Like they they had these like only things you can capture in hand drawn animation and CGI just 100% does not work for this movie. Not at all. It always felt like the um the characters they didn't mesh well with the 3d environment right. it felt like they were 2d characters forced into a 3d world right and maybe that's and i think it even like ruined vocal i'm sorry no go ahead um it ruined vocal performances for me because uh bella yaga like i looked her up she has like a really long like career in voice acting but just like i couldn't stand even looking or listening to her character because the combination of her voice and then the horrible 3d animation like it was just so off-putting um same thing with earwig too like there's moments where i'm like okay she's being like cute and trying to be charming but then the animation would clash with it or the animation would look okay-ish but then she'd be really annoying with her voice acting um and that whole end credit sequence i feel like was just such a slap in the face to see like these characters done in hand-drawn animation Um, And like what we could have gotten compared to what we were given. Right. And I think the CGI is more constrictive. Uh, Adam, wouldn't you say so as, you know, someone who knows a little bit about the voice acting aspect of things, do you think that was more constricting as far as vocal performances? Uh, Because I know in animation, they can play with the mouth movements more. They have more freedom to try and adapt some of the dialogue with CG. You're much more constricted, I think, with what you're able to do. Because I guess you're taking it like that much further with, I guess, uh, more attention to detail i guess more realistic if you will right not actually being real actors so that makes sense yeah and it's just trying to match up like you know mouth features and whatnot yeah and they really didn't match a lot of the time you can tell i think they had a harder time with some Mm -hmm. of the vocal performances here and it's it's interesting because i know julie brought up the the one the, the witch that adopts earwig she's probably the most talented out of all the performers because she's an experienced vocalist and you can tell 
with her performance there that she kind of was able to kind of get something out of the character. But everybody else felt kind of like just wooden. Uh, Earwig just felt like she was yelling the whole time. I, I know John was probably not having a good time over there. Uh, what did you think of the vocal performances? Did you think there was anything there for any of them? Or Nope. They should all quit. <laughs> terrible job. <laughs> Hated this movie. I think they did a terrible job. I mean, the one lady was all right, I guess. I yeah. Give her some credit. What did you think of the Mandrake? Did but you like? Did you like the Mandrake character at all? I, I thought he was probably the more redeeming out of the characters. I just wish we knew more about him, right? Yeah. I think if they made a movie about the Mandrake, maybe we would watch it. But this garbage doesn't make me want to watch it any more than Mandrake. <laughs> but I thought his character seemed kind of cool. Yeah, and they, and they had some cool ideas. Again, it's, I keep coming back to it, and I don't want to keep circling it because we'll be here all day, but they, again, they had a lot of good ideas with that, even like where he would pass through the walls, like the one scene where he like kind of walks through like the uh, the top of the door, he just kind of just like walks phases right through, and it's like, what the hell is that? Like, there's some really cool like ideas here for something. It's just, it cannot come together. It can't get its shit together. This movie just really is a disaster. And I, I, and again, I understand why Miyazaki felt the need to come back to his studio because studio Ghibli needs, needs him. And, you know, this makes me worried for any other projects that they start to work on. Cause CGI is seen as the, the cheaper version of animation. But if you're not proficient at it, especially in this day and age where we see other movies, uh, like even not even Disney, we're talking like illumination did with like the super Mario brothers movie. And some of these other, even smaller anime studios are able to do a better job than studio Ghibli, the head of like, Disney peak animation for Japan cannot handle this art style. Um, th- th- there's a problem there. So I, hopefully they're able to go back and like, kind of go back to the drawing board, you know, with their next film and maybe pick a project and put some imagination into it. Cause God, this was just terrible to get through. Uh, and I think it's with that. We're ready to give our final scores. I'm going to give earwig and the witch a 2.5 out of 10. I really wanted to like this movie. Uh, I wanted to give it, you know, a chance at some point, you know, I always like to fight for the underdog a little bit. Maybe there was something there that other people didn't see, or there was something special about it that only I could find as the, the reviewer watching this movie. It's not here guys. I'm, I'm sorry. Like this is a really disaster of a movie. Uh, there's barely any animation, uh, imagination. The animation is non-existent. Uh, again, when the movie was over, I thought the credits were the best looking part of this entire movie. The ideas that they throw at you with some of the magic and some of the visual ideas could have been something, but it, even, even if it wasn't the only reason I even give it even a look is because it's related to studio Ghibli and the output they put out. Otherwise I thought this would have been like a bargain bin movie from some, New Zealand animation studio no one's ever heard about or something like that. This is a disaster. And uh, Earwig, it it hurts the legacy of Ghibli. And God, I really hope they can bounce back. Adam, what do you think on this one? I'm going to give Earwig and the Witch a 3 out of 10. not good it was just very unenjoyable very d- interesting choice to make uh your first she uh, cg movie completely stuck in a house the entire time yeah i don't know if that's just a safe decision that they chose to do this time around or if that was because i mean all the other movies they have so much more fantastical environments that could have been cg and i'm sure they could have had so many more you know visually appeal appealing uh settings but for this one I know it doesn't work. Yeah. I, th- I wonder if that's budgetary reasons too, Adam, you know, yeah, it's less assets you have to make mm-hmm. if you can keep recycling them over and over again. Uh, Cause even some of the rooms, I mean, True. besides the one potion room where they make actually some of the magical potions, which barely happened too in this movie, you would think something with magic actually had more like magic scenes like that involved in it. Uh, it's really just like plain bedrooms. Most of the time you're like sitting in her bedroom or in the bathroom or in a hallway like that. That's, that's kind of it. Those are really the settings. And sometimes the backyard, other than that, there's not like one other setting, I think in this movie, except for the opening. And yeah, that's an interesting fact. You know, if there's such amateur animators, you know, 
I don't know. Hopefully they, they got better. <laughs> uh, if not, Miyazaki probably came in and fired all of them. I don't think they had a job after this because, uh, oh, man, it's a disaster for Ghibli. It really is. John, how about you, man? What are you thinking on this one? I'm going to give Earwig what it deserved and what it put out. A 2.0. A novel? Hmm. Mm. What is this? It's total rubbish. Maybe I should just rewrite it for him. Oh! It's garbage, terrible movie, <clears throat> and the ending. It's almost like a, one of those cold case murders, you know? <laughs> it was terrible, it killed you at the end, and it left you with nothing. <laughs> terrible movie. No it's, satisfying it's conclusion. You'll find this... <laughs> you know what? Yeah, exactly. You know what you'll find this? In the dollar store bin. Not getting picked up either. There'll be 20 of them right there. Yeah. It, nobody wants this trash. Yeah. I mean, besides like even another if, high school type put out shit. Yeah. It seems like someone that they made is like really amateur filmmaker decided to go and make this. And it's a shame. There's, there's opportunities no. for it to have had charm and energy. It just doesn't have any of that. No, this is what happens when you get people doing it for the first time and they can't even do it very well. Yeah. No, Terribly it's, Joe. Yeah, it's a shame. Again, it's just, it's just a mark on Studio Ghibli there. Julie, how about you? What do you think of this one? I'm going to be giving Earwig and the Witch a 2.7 out of 10. Okay, now what on earth is that? That's the Mandrake. Yeah, his den's just on the other side of the wall. Hang on, you actually talk? Of course I do, just not very often. This movie makes me even more angry due to the potential that it could have lived up to. The animation was awful and it impacted the entire story. Like Kevin said, we went and he's like, just ignore it. We know it's bad. That's the elephant in the room. It's obvious, whatever. And I still couldn't get past it. And it really just soiled the whole movie. But with that being said, the story went nowhere. The characters, except for the Mandrake, and I liked the cat as well, were uninteresting and it was just not a good time it, it's really just a waste of time this movie i, I hate to say that but it's really just a waste of time it feels like a toddler special that would a be on like, yeah i mean it's like something that would be on like nick jr or something it seems like one of those like really really little kid shows but even those really little little kid shows i think have I more interesting those. yeah they have more interesting things to do than this movie there just was really nothing here mm-hmm. and you know and they're better done yeah, way better. I, yeah, I'd have to say so. I, I can't imagine it being much worse than this. Uh, there's literally no ending to this movie, and you know, I, it's tough. It, you know, I could just go on and on by how terrible this is, but I, I feel bad for Studio Ghibli. You know, they they have to bounce back from this, and I know um, Miyazaki does have another movie coming out. I believe it's relatively soon, probably within the next couple months. It's slated to come out his next feature film, and you know. I'm curious to see what he puts out and maybe more so like, I'm sure that movie will be, you know, fine to good. I don't really see it being terrible or something from him, but I, I'm concerned for the studio for the future, you know, with everything I've watched up until this point, you know, we've sat down, we've watched tons of these studio Ghibli films. The one thing that I think was the, the heart and soul, unfortunately was one man while Disney, I always compare it to Disney, obviously studio Ghibli, but Walt Disney wasn't just the, the the driving force in his studio. Yeah, he was for quite a while, but people were able to take his legacy, carry it on, and make great films. And that's what I do want from Studio Ghibli. Uh, obviously, Goro's not hitting him out of the park at all. This is his third time. I mean, three strikes, you're out, man. You know, I didn't watch Tale from Earthsea. I saw from up on Poppy Hill. It was fine. You know, I, well, again, that wasn't really for me. And we, we didn't talk about it in the series, but it's just you got to find some new blood. You know, whether that means just going out, restarting over and just seeing what you can do. I mean, CG can be done. Japan has done it recently. Uh, I watched uh, the Lupin the Third animated film and that was really good. That was a CGI movie where they utilized it perfectly. So you can't tell me you can't do it because it can be done. It's just whatever was going on here, whether like Adam said, it had to do with the animators or how Miyazaki not wanting to help his son. It, it doesn't matter. It falls upon the studio to fix those problems. And Earwig really shouldn't exist. And, you know, it's going to go down as, again, a huge mark on the studio. And 
I'm pretty sure they'll be able to bounce back in the future with Miyazaki's help. But again, what I look forward to seeing is what they do when he's not around, because that's what's going to really matter. Uh, you know, we'll always have these films. Uh, the films we watched, I think, were fantastic for the most part. There really wasn't anything terrible. Uh, besides, this was really probably the absolute worst thing out of the bunch that we've watched. But, you know, it's just it's an interesting testament to a studio. It's interesting to see what other people outside of our bubble in the United States to see what other studios do. Uh, but, you know, that's all I can say. I think anime was a lot of fun. I want to thank everyone at home for joining us. Let us know in the comments below. What was your favorite Studio Ghibli movie that we looked at this this month? Uh, was it Howl's Moving Castle? Maybe it was Earwig and we're completely wrong. And, you know, you're like, what are you guys talking about? Oh, my God. The comments are blowing up in the summer. I, I don't think so. But if I am, let me know. Please let me know in the future. Uh, next year, if you want us to talk about it, maybe we'll do another anime. I know John really wants to do another anime. Uh, we'll look at maybe some of the other Studio Ghibli films we missed and some of the other studio. There's other animators out there, I promise. It's not just Studio Ghibli. Uh, but I think we had a great time. I want to thank everyone at home. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Real Review. This concludes anime. We'll catch you in the next series of videos. My name's Kevin. That's Adam, John, Julie. We are the real movie guys. Real guys. Real movies. Real thoughts. We'll catch you next time. If you guys like what you've seen here today, consider giving this video a like and leaving your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to stay up to date with everything Real Movie Guys related, make sure to hit that subscribe button and check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And don't forget all you audio listeners at home, we are available on many podcasting platforms. Just search The Real Movie Guys, you should pop right up. Thank you again all so much for joining us on this episode of The Real Review. We are The Real Movie Guys. Real guys, real movies, real thoughts. Catch you next time.